Welcome everyone to another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK, and today's going to be ever so slightly different. Normally, I'm joined by my co-host, Bricky, but unfortunately, I think he might have had too much forget-me juice, and he's out with strep throat. So, wishing Bricky a very speedy recovery, but we do have a very special guest. Uh, he is our friend, Kiriath. Uh, I will let him introduce himself in a second, but before that, uh, if you enjoyed today's podcast, Head over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. If you enjoy the podcast, get yourself access to the Discord, uh, bloopers if they happen, HD posters, real nice quality HD posters, and all that sort of behind-the-scenes stuff. So patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. But like I said, Bricky is out today uh, with Strep Throat, and we have our friend Kirioth, uh, who you may have heard on one of Shai's uh, art streams in the past, Welcome, friend. Thank you for filling in. And uh, I, th I think a small introduction, telling people about yourself a little bit, it's a good start, right? It'll, you know, let them get to know you. Yeah, give them an idea as to what they've let themselves in for just by just by clicking the thing. That's yeah. <laughs> Got to give I mean, fair doing... warning, haven't you? Yeah, you're doing us a solid, and it's much appreciated. Well, it, it, I think I think the best way to describe. Um, just generally what happens on my channel is just random nonsense about Warhammer. That's pretty much it. Models, things that are happening, <laughs> complaints increasingly. Oh. But just just general, if it involves 40k or Age of Sigmar, and especially if it involves like, the models for them or turning them into weird monstrosities, I'm all about it. And that's pretty much everything that I do uh, on my channel, which is, for the most part, getting more and more... Um, <laughs> random and weird but you gotta switch it up you gotta make things you gotta make things different occasionally even if that means going off the rails every now and again man but it's more fun I, that I way was, isn't it i was gonna say if you're just all about random warhammer nonsense you're gonna fit in real well here <laughs> that's all like... we do it's just off the rails warhammer memes and lore and and eventually going into the tabletop and how random shit well, you're gonna do fine you're gonna do you're perfect it's great I feel like it's a it's on paper at least a pretty good fit. As long as it just <laughs> maintains it's fine. <laughs> on paper this is going to go well. In practice, mm, we'll what see. What is it? Theoretical and practical if you're being yeah. all, if you're being all Gilliman and like theoretically, <laughs> yes, 100%. Practically, we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> oh, poor Gilliman. Poor present day Gilliman. <laughs> I, I like him. So, it's it makes him int I hate the Ultramarines love Gilliman. I love the contrast of having like someone that was around for the Horus heresy in present day Imperium and him just fucking hating everything, but he can't do anything about it. Like you can't just topple the Imperium. Uh it's it's do? great. It's such yeah. a good it's such a good like plot twist where they've taken someone who is essentially like borderline all powerful. Like he's he's a full on demigod. Oh yeah, almost yeah. indestructible. Can take on waves of enemies by himself. Has a ridiculously, like, just absurdly powerful strategic mind. And then they stick him in a position where it's like, well, you hate every second of this, but you can do nothing. Enjoy, and then, Enjoy, <laughs> and then yeah. you just get to watch the fallout. It's great. <laughs> yeah, you know everything the Emperor of Mankind didn't want the Imperium to come. Yeah, it's all come to pass. Enjoy. It's like oof. <laughs> Oof. Oh, and you, do you remember the brother that backstabbed you and just trashed half of your half of your <laughs> empire? Uh, they all using the book that he wrote to justify it. So have fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a little it's, it's poor Gilliman, but makes him a super interesting character. Anyway, so what are we what are we learning about today? We are we are going kind of space marine adjacent because. If, uh, if, if there's anyone listening who has had any experience with my channel, they would know that I'm quite a fan of the Space Marine Dreadnought in all its forms. Ooh. So we're going to talk about Dreadnoughts today because on, on oh, the face of it, nice. on the face of it, it's just a box with legs. And, and you could look at them and go, ah, oh, some of these are a bit dated, some of these aren't that great. But there's loads of different versions. There's a bunch of different loadouts. Some of them make the people inside them go crazy. It's... Mm. It's great. There's so many like different. There's just so many different things about them. Even down to like chapter specific ones. So you know you might you might have uh you might have your your standard box nort as it's as it's kind of uh like 
fondly known. It's the proper <laughs> old. It just looks like a box on legs. It's it still really awesome. Does. Yeah. Um, but that's the that's the Castroferum Pattern Dreadnought. And for ages, that was like the only one you could really get. Uh, it was the only one that was really properly resented on the uh, like represented on the tabletop. But now, now they went they went all out, and they were like, "No, we're not just having this version." There were like chapter specific ones, so like the Blood Angels have got one that's just got two close combat weapons because they're the Blood Angels, and of course, that's what they yeah. do. Um, and occasionally they'll put someone in a dreadnought who still goes into the Black Rage. So they paint it black oh! and give it a red stripe. <laughs> and then it's a Death Company Dreadnought, which has got, again, two close combat weapons, but just yeah. goes insane in close combat. Which. Oh, God. <laughs> even that, it's like Dreadnoughts, actually kind of rare. They're not something that should be just absolutely everywhere, but the Blood Angels will stick the, like, half dead Space Marine into one. And if, it, if he goes crazy, it's like, well, can we direct him at the enemy? Yes. <laughs> Grand. Paint it black. Send him on his way. Let's go. <laughs> he was like going to this... go crazy anyway. He's got the black rage. So you might yeah. as well put him in a giant vessel that makes him even more potent on the battlefield and just let him go. Just get out of his way, everybody. Because <laughs> dreadnoughts are serious. Like, dread, you don't fuck with a dreadnought. Um, oh, yeah. I know. They're, they're really. The thing I love about the dreadnought is just the fact that it is a. It's like a <laughs> vaguely humanoid suit of armor it's like a massive suit of armor for a half dead guy and it is so like heavy armored and powerful compared to a normal space marine and the only way you can get into one is by being almost dead it's like you're not you're not quite you're not quite 100 percent gone there's just enough left of you to be stuck into a into a (laughs) sarcophagus which you can take in and out of dreadnoughts so, like, for instance, just to do a mild tangent for to set up something later, Chaos, mm. Chaos Dreadnoughts, they, they're, you know, they, after a while, become something a bit more twisted and a bit more, like, evil and and almost malformed. Oh, yeah, they yeah, become yeah, Hellbrutes. Yeah. So, I, was get, I, I, was, I was about to pull that name, too. I was like, I think it's Hellbrute, because I've seen a couple yeah. of them, and, and they are gnarly. They're great looking, but... Ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they've got like the muscle coming out of the joints and the yeah. armor kind of turns into flesh. They're really creepy. I love yeah, them. You like, They're like they like horrific. fuse with the dreadnought, and they got all these tentacles and ugh, it's yeah, great. Yeah, they tend to uh, the Chaos Marines tend to go a bit mad in dreadnoughts. So a way round <laughs> them just killing everything around them whilst they're not actually in battle is they just take the sarcophagus out of it so that they are in complete darkness with no sensory input just raging at black nothingness until they're actually needed which is oh. horrific <laughs> yeah, that's that is so one of the things about the dreadnoughts is i i, I was i was of the same mindset that like i always thought they looked kind of boring cuz you're right they're like it's a box on legs with guns uh but the 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 lore behind them is so fucking wild that you can take a nearly dead person and it's just like even in death you serve the emperor and it's just like oh my god it's you can't even let the corpse be be peaceful you got to stick that into a fucking box and just let it go hog wild and oh, dreadnoughts are cool dreadnoughts are mm. they're like they are like peak 40k to me because it's not oh, just God, that the yeah. person inside is, is a space marine, which is already, <laughs> you know, the iconic, the iconic 40k yeah. thing. But it's it's not just a space marine. It's a nearly dead space marine who has got enough willpower to be able to actually pilot this horrific, like, part robot that they have to be nearly dead to be put into in the first place. And in yep. some cases, it just breaks them. Like, it just destroys oh, yeah. their mind. The normal mm-hmm. dreadnoughts aren't too bad for that. So, like, you, you box noughts, you, 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 crast, you castroferum, which is the worst name ever, by the way. <laughs> Trying to pronounce it more than three times in, like, half an hour. There's just no chance. Um, it's it's not too bad. They, they can remain pretty functional for quite a while. Mm-hmm. But as time goes on, it gets harder and harder to, like, wake them up between battles and such. And so you end up in like the territory of venerable dreadnoughts, which are kind of the same as the 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 Castroferum, but they get like more ornate because they've got a marine in who is like ancient. There are some right. venerable dreadnoughts that have been around for like for for centuries upon centuries. One of the most famous ones is uh, is is Bjorn the Fellhanded, which mm-hmm. is a venerable dreadnought of the Space Wolves, and the guy inside it 
fought on Prospero against Magnus the Red with Lehman Russ. Ooh. Wow. So he's um. he is absolutely <laughs> yeah, ancient. I think he's the oldest dreadnought that uh, oldest dreadnought that exists. I think probably by proxy, like the oldest space marine in the Imperium at this point as well. I would assume Damn. outside of outside of some of the Chaos Marines who you know are still lurking oh, yeah. around because, mm-hmm. but they've got like time shenanigans with the warp yeah. going on. Whereas yeah. Bjorn has not had that. He's just been there He's asleep a for a lot of it. <laughs> he gets woken yeah. up once a century. <laughs> Ooh. I was gonna say we're read for a for a book club. We're reading the uh, the Night Lords trilogy about Talos, and they uh, they revive a dreadnought. Uh, I keep mixing up his name. It, is it? It's either Malkador or Malkarian is his name, and uh, he was around. I th- he was at least around long enough to see uh, Conrad Kurz and uh, Conrad Kurz's death. I think. So yeah, you've got the uh, you've got the your standard your standard box nort, your standard cast castroferum. Why do I? I'm just gonna say box nort. We're just gonna stick with box nort because it's okay. so much easier to say. <laughs> box the nort. thing is, if you just say dreadnought, now that doesn't apply. You could say Mark V dreadnought because that's the most like common one. That's the most common chassis mm-hmm. that there is, and that's the one that's like is uh, kind of all over the tabletop. But you can't just say dreadnought anymore because it went from being here's a dreadnought, you can take a dreadnought, to there being the Dreadnought, the Venerable Dreadnought, there is Chaos Dreadnoughts, there's also Contempt of Dreadnoughts, Leviathan Dreadnoughts, <laughs> Derideo Dreadnoughts, yeah. Redemptor Dreadnoughts, Galatius <laughs> Dreadnoughts, and oh, there's another one as well that I can't remember the name of. That's annoying. I nearly got all of them, I think. But yeah, there's quite a few. And yeah, they've kind of gone from just couple. being Yeah, it's like it's it's kind of gone from this 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 box on legs to some of the coolest designs <laughs> for the Space Marine stuff by far. When you call it a box knot, all I can see in my head is like just this shoddy like cardboard box with legs now. <laughs> just like a just like a Metal Gear Solid like box. That has... just, just an actual cardboard box <laughs> yeah. with the flaps hanging down with, and just a little yeah, pair with, like, of legs. Yeah, with like some packaging that. tape on top, and it just got some like human legs and human feet coming out of it, and it just says Dreadnought in like Sharpie on the front, like a moving, uh, <laughs> like a moving company just sort of scribbled it on. Yeah. Yeah. That's I want that. I would absolutely proxy that on the tabletop. I'd do it. I don't care. <laughs> Even <laughs> would, in would, death, I still it. serve with the cardboard kid that Shy posted. <laughs> so, someone make that. Someone make that like a three D model so I can print it. I, I want to use that as a proxy mm-hmm. for a normal dreadnought. I would yes. absolutely do it. <laughs> yes, we've proxied Doge Van Dyer before, and Bricky's used it on dice check. So why not this? Why not an actual? cardboard box for a dreadnought. cardboard box and all. Oh, God. <laughs> now that is, that is quality. That's you could actually make that pretty solid. At home. That's <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> make that into an actual kit. That's not bad. That's a that's a dreadnought out of cardboard. There you go. It's pretty knot. solid. I d- you did, in one of the starter sets, you did get an uh, an orc dreadnought, um, which was oh. just a cardboard cutout. So it was a picture <laughs> of an orc dreadnought on shaped card with a little stand it went in. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> it's, I mean, it, it's like, it, it's not, it's it's brilliant. It's also like you open the box and like, what the hell is this? But it's weirdly nostalgic. I have I have tried to pick one up and it's surprisingly difficult to get hold of. <laughs> People uh, don't want to get rid of them. Now I'm just like, man, what if an orc actually found like a cardboard box and was like is this a dreadnought like you know you know that anime picture of the guy looking at the flower like is this a or not a flower the little moth is this a whatever (laughs) now i'm just picturing an orc looking at a cardboard box going is this a dreadnought and he's like oh my god this is a dreadnought and he convinces his whole clan that it's a dreadnought and this fucking cardboard box actually becomes a dreadnought because this fucking idiot orc convinced Everybody, it's, it's an imperial dreadnought, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that was a solid accent, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, if someone hasn't made that already, then I really don't know where the 40k community is in terms of, you mm-hmm. know, in terms of like productivity. Someone <laughs> must have got a cardboard box and stuck an orc out the top of it and stuck weapons on it. Someone yeah. must have done that, surely. Must have. And if, if they, they haven't, haven't, that needs to be I mean, Shai's now's next the time, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shai's next art stream, painting orc dreadnought. He just brings out a cardboard box. Yeah, I like it. I like it. 
Just print the that money. Feels like a ch- that feels like a challenge, actually. That feels like something that should oh. be a challenge. Yeah. Well, to, to I mean, build we've an got orc a, dreadnought. We've got a lot of people listening right now, probably. So, uh, you know, add us Just on Twitter. Fl- flood Twitter with pictures of <laughs> cardboard orc dreadnoughts <laughs> yeah. that, that I, you've built. <laughs> yeah, you have to actually build it. Out of cardboard, because everybody's got a boatload of cardboard sitting around. Yeah, it's fine. It's, it's, oh, God. It's, yeah, it's, <laughs> there, I, there, there is an actual orc dreadnought. It's a deaf dread instead of a instead of a dreadnought. And it's a bit different in that the orcs aren't Ooh. half dead when you put them in. They just pilot it from the inside. The thing is, I, I, uh, I've I, always known that to be orcs that are piloting them, but it does say a few places that Gretchen pilot them. Which is confusing because Gretchen pilot the tiny versions. So there's a Death Dread, which is the uh, which is the old version, and then there's a Killer Can, which is a little tiny baby one, which oh, is just yeah, like yeah. it's just like a little oil drum with legs and a buzzsaw. It's great. Oh yeah, I've seen Killer Cans before. I've never seen the Death Dread. The Death Dread looks sick though. It's That's really good. Dope. I love I love the uh, the way orcs do skulls. I love that aesthetic. Is, is yeah, sick. Oof. they uh they they definitely have some of the best looking vehicles, orcs. And I, th- I have to admit, I think the Death Dread looks better than the standard Dreadnought, just because it's more there's more like yeah, there's more visual interest going on, and yeah. it's you know it's got more weapons for a start, more arms, more weapons, buzz saws and chain swords <laughs> and all sorts of like pincers and <laughs> stuff. It's so good. Looks like a Swiss Army knife. Yeah. <laughs> The best thing is that a lot of them have got, like, they'll have, like, chainsaws and stuff, but they won't have anything to grip necessarily that isn't also a chainsaw. So, like, even the top <laughs> claw, if you look at the, the top claw on uh, on that one, it's oh, technically yeah. a claw, but it's just it's, <laughs> it's, it's just It's swords. just chainsaws. It it's has just going to cut grip. you in half. <laughs> what are you, you going to grip with that? Well, I guess you could just scissor a space marine in half with two chainsaw snips. But that, th- oof, ooh, that's gross. I'm pretty sure one of the best parts of the well, I'll say best parts of Dawn of War three trailer, just one of the best parts of Dawn of War three flat out because I hated that game. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure in there there is a a scene of a space marine getting picked up and just like crushed to pieces by a death dread, which I ooh. it just made me so happy. <laughs> it made me so happy. <laughs> space marine getting fucked, yeah, and just smushed by an orc. <laughs> they they do have as well two two um kind of like bigger more impressive dreads the orcs so they've got the death dread they also have a mecha dread and a big mech dread which are both forge oh. world models which are similar to the death dread but bigger and uglier and with bigger weapons um <laughs> th- those are like those are great models i think they might be currently out of production I don't know whether they're coming back or not, but that's like right. they're like a wish list item of one day. I have no need for it, but one day I will Whoa, own one of these. Is, because, is that yeah. what it looks like? <laughs> yeah. Holy shit! That, I believe <laughs> that I believe is the mech is the the uh, the mega dread mega dread mega dread. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> wow, that's a that is a. Can you really call that a mini though? It's, <laughs> it's pretty, that's, like a, you... that's a medium. So these dreadnoughts, uh, these orc ones, they're different from the human because you don't got to be a dead orc to drive this, right? It's, it's any orc, a Gretchen can pilot it. It's just whatever. It's yeah, it's yeah. just a bunch of levers and buttons, and they just they, they <laughs> drop a lad in, and they're like, "This is forward, and this is the this, this is the, the kill button. button. Off you go." <laughs> and then they just let they just let him have at it. <laughs> that sounds like a great time for an orc forward kill wonderful i feel like they get much more enjoyment out of it than the poor like <laughs> three quarters dead missing all limbs oh, yeah. you know half his face <laughs> gone space marine it's been it shoved like into her way more fun to be an orc dreadnought pilot <laughs> you get out and stretch your legs fun. afterwards i mean you have legs which is Ooh, already probably low, more low fun blow. <laughs> low blow why don't you just cut their legs out from under him, guy? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, the, it's the actual. It's, it's one of those weird things where, for 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 forty, like for the Space Marines, it should be an awful thing. Like it should be really bad to end up in a dreadnought. But 
that like your loyalist space marines for the most part it's like an honor they get to continue yeah. serving even after mm-hmm. death like even as they are on the verge of on the verge of death they get to continue serving the emperor and serving their chapter yeah. chaos space marines hate it and do not want it and it's more of a punishment <laughs> than anything else is it really they yeah, chaos they, space marines just don't like it they 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 just don't want anything to do with it. For the most part, a Chaos Space Marine does not want to go into a Chaos Dreadnought, mostly because it will become a hell brew after a while. It will just start fusing with itself, go insane from like pain and anger, and Oof. it's it's not it's not a great fate. To be honest, it can be not great for uh, it can be not great for normal Space Marines either. So with your, your normal yeah. your normal Dreadnought and your venerable Dreadnought, generally speaking, they they might get harder to rouse and they might go to sleep for longer and it might be a bit trickier to actually get them into fighting condition the longer they've been in a dreadnought like waking bjorn up every 100 years yeah so that the entire so that the entirety of the space wolves can gather around and listen to him because he's like <laughs> a direct link back to lehman russ he's yeah. like the soul of the chapter so he well, I say chapter for them. It's 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 more legion still, but like he actually is like a proper tangible link back to that. There are some dreadnoughts that that doesn't that doesn't really work so well with. So the Leviathan pattern dreadnought, which is one of the I think for me personally the absolute favorite, the oh, Leviathan. Okay. Uh, eventually, eventually it just places a lethal level of strain on the occupant. Oh no! <laughs> so after a while, just the 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 mental capacity and like the uh, the willpower required to to control a leviathan, they just they just burn out and die, and they have to be replaced with someone else because the actual dreadnought itself kills them slowly over time, which oh. is even more brutal than being put in it in the first place. Really, I know you have um, to be basically dead to get put in the damn thing. And then the thing is just gonna slowly kill you even further when you're basic. Oh, that's that's awful. That's are the worst. Yeah. <laughs> are are like... Leviathan dreadnoughts at least like super mega beefy and like? Oh yeah, they okay. they so they better have... than a regular dreadnought, I assume. Yeah, they're they're way better than a than a regular. Okay. They're stronger. They're more heavily armored. They have access to some of the just some of the best weapons. So a few of the things that uh, that they have access to something like something called a Leviathan storm cannon. So Ooh. it's a four-barreled <laughs> gun that can just mince infantry like like nothing. It can just tear through infantry. Oh, um, they have like older kind of dark age of technology stuff as well, like the uh, the oh. I forget that I forget the name of it. It's it's the it's a grav weapon um, that kind of just dumps miniature black holes on people. Is roughly how oh. it works. Um, <laughs> so it's 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 pretty good, but it does yeah. have the downside of of you know burning the occupant out. It takes well. a while. It takes a while, but they do they do eventually they do eventually die whilst interred in the uh, in the Leviathan, which is is just a bit harsh. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's well, like... I mean, you you know what they say: you gotta crack a few eggs to make an omelet, right? So, <laughs> gotta crack a few crack a few space marine brains yeah. to <laughs> crack a few almost already dead legendary space marines to make an omelet. That's fine. Also, these things are tanky as shit. Shy just posted what the <clears throat> mini looks like, and damn, that's yeah, a that... that's a beefy boy. Damn. They are my favourite. They're my favourite easily. They're just so they're so chunky, and the uh, and the actual weapons are like are, are like massively beefy. Grav Flux Bombard. That's the name of the other one. The the oh. the one that just <laughs> launches, <laughs> launches graves of people. Black Ops. <laughs> Jesus. The uh, the one that Shai's just put in is a it's a Derrideo pattern. Um, oh. So this one is this <laughs> this is basically they took a Contemptor. They stuck well a Leviathan. They stuck like a kind of, kind of boat-like front oh. on it, and gave yeah. it the biggest guns known to man. <laughs> yeah. That's like those are like warship cannons. Like you, those look like fucking lancers that you'd put on a spaceship. It's Golly. yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Giant missile launcher. I think actually think I think it's technically kind of based on the contempt of thinking about it, not the Leviathan, but it's like. It has very similar legs, like it's a heavy, it's like a heavy support platform, where they just yeah. they just ram guns all over it. The chest is like super kind of 
pushed out because it can fit heavy bolters or heavy flamers just in the chest of the dreadnought. Um, oh my god, which... those are little guns in the chest, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> so it's got the main, <laughs> like the main gigantic cannons and the oh gigantic god. missile launcher, and just just in case it needs it, more guns sticking out from under the chest. You know, there's still space in the kneecaps and the feet. You guys haven't put any guns in there. You know, there's plenty of space for it. <laughs> yeah, I could fit another one or two in there. <laughs> oh yeah, certainly, certainly. I was expecting it to go like full like anime mecha, and like the chest opens up and there's like a big fuck you mega can in the middle. I was I was kind of hoping for that, but oh well. I, I, someone's probably, I bet someone's done that, <laughs> to be honest. Oh, probably. Someone's probably converted that and carved out the... Yeah, definitely. Maybe I should, maybe I should do that. <laughs> that's, maybe, that's, that's, a, that's a good idea. <laughs> maybe you should, I think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I had something, mm-hmm. something I meant to mention at the start, which, which would hopefully legitimise my kind of over-obsession with Dreadnoughts to some degree. Um, <laughs> at the time of recording, there are 32 in the room with me. So, it, it's, you have it's, thirty-two it's, dreadnoughts. Yes, <laughs> damn. It's, it's worth pointing out. It's it's not just like it's not just like I like the the idea of them. I also just really do like dreadnoughts. Um, for quite a while, my main army was a just a dedicated dreadnought army, and it was just dreadnoughts and nothing else. Um, about oh. four thousand. It ended up after the after the change we made to points. It ended up being well over four thousand points of just dreadnoughts. Um, Ooh. so. So yeah, I like them. They're a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> How scary would that be to roll up against? It's like, oh yeah, here's my army. I've got some space marines. I've got some vehicles, and you're just like, yeah, I just have dreadnoughts. It's just, just dreadnoughts. It, it actually did pretty well, but only because the people fighting me were very understanding and let me just ignore things like detachments. <laughs> <laughs> it was very much one of those. I'm going to do a little force of a few dreadnoughts because that'd be fun, and then it just spiraled. Like uh, absurdly out of control to the extent where I was like, get making trying to build up one of every type of contemptor. So like the contemptor oh. dreadnought, it's it's my second favorite after the leviathan. The contemptor is like a it's a smaller one. It's mm-hmm. it's kind of more more rounded, more sort of it looks more developed than the box nought does. Um, mm-hmm. but the contemptor and leviathans they both have individual models for each legion from forge world um or at least the contemptors do the leviathans are still catching up and uh and i was on a mission for a while to have one of every legion's contemptor um which oh, wow. is a bit of it's a bit of an ask i got i <laughs> got a lot fa- yeah but i got a fair way through it to be honest um but yeah they they're they are they are stronger and better than your standard dreadnoughts they're better than the box naught um okay. they have a bit more in terms of uh, in terms of firepower with certain weapons, but overall for me they just look they just look better. They look more articulated. They look a bit more yeah. They they still look really heavily armored, even though they're they're kind of relatively slim. Um, yeah, they're 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 a really good pattern, and there's a lot of different versions of them, like the Thousand Suns one. So the Thousand Suns have Ooh. a Psycho Dreadnought. They did in the Horus, well, in uh, in uh, in the like before and during the Horus Heresy. Anyway, I don't believe they have access to those anymore. Um, but yeah, you pr- well, you just have to. You probably just have to uh, field uh, uh, Hellbrood if you want to do that for Thousand Suns, right? If you can you still take contemptors not- for Chaos Space Marines. You can still take relic oh, okay. stuff, so relic contemptors and Leviathans. I think they're Hellforged for Chaos technically, but you can still field them. But I don't know whether they can use the actual psychic one that they that they had right. access to and have access to in the Horus Heresy rules. Essentially they were like, okay, everyone in the everyone in this legion is a psyker. But when we die, <laughs> or when we get nearly wrecked and get put in a dreadnought, lose access to psychic power, what do we do? So Magnus decided that he would fix it and created a an, an Osiris device which you kind of put onto the uh, onto the it goes around the brain i believe if i remember correctly of oh. the of the guy who's been you know nearly nearly killed <laughs> yeah. um and that allows him to use his psychic powers through the dreadnought itself so it's not just a contemptor oh, wow. with a uh, on that one there's a, a twin linked a twin linked auto cannon and a close combat weapon but it's also a psyker at the same time which that's, is that's pretty awesome <laughs> it's that's- great 
that's that's a pretty that's a pretty swanky device Magnus made there. Um, he gave it to all the legions, and then none of them used it. <laughs> they what? were just like, no. oh, well, that's true. I guess I guess a lot of a lot of the legion be like, psych or shit. Yeah, they got a bit, you know, a bit antsy about that, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. Lehman Russ just, just that's angry such wolf a, noises. <laughs> such a hypocrite, though. You can't be against psychers, <laughs> then be like, yeah, but my my lads are fine because they're not really psychers. <laughs> not really. Come on, Lehman, um, you're smarter than this. Let's yeah. let's not be uh, let's not be nitpicking. <laughs> Lehman smart. Mm. <laughs> uh, fair, maybe maybe fair comment there. <laughs> as a Thousand Suns player, I take or not player. As a Thousand Suns fan, uh, any chance I get to poke fun at Lehman Russ or those fucking space wolves, oh, I take it. I, I mean, I it's, take that shot. It's justified. <laughs> it's justified. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> oh, the I other like... thing, I just because I'll, I'll totally forget because I always forget this oh, yeah, even yeah, on no tabletop worries. when I'm playing with a bunch of dreadnoughts. I always forget to. Uh, I always forget to take the fact that the contemptor has a shield as well. So on the oh, things really? that locks it out from being a uh, from being kind of on par with the box, not a bit stronger and a bit tougher, and also they have a they have a uh, they have a shield, an atomantic field. Which I think oh. is the right name. I will double check that, but I'm pretty sure that is the yes, it is atomantic oh. field generator. So they get like an invulnerable save. So they oh, are dreadnoughts wow. with an armor save and invulnerable save, which is which is pretty cool. <laughs> As if they needed that, right? Holy <laughs> shit! Uh, yeah, contemptor dreadnoughts. I I like those quite a bit more than the box knots because they just seem more stylized. They seem like a yeah. giant fucking space marine like it's, it looks like a space marine on crack um, yeah yeah the, the 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 ratio of like the kind of limb to body ratio is a lot better yeah, like they, they look a lot more in proportion and a lot more like they could actually do what dreadnoughts are supposed to do uh yeah. <laughs> which it, it I mean, doesn't look like it's as bad to be stuck in a contemptor as it is to be stuck in like a box knot i don't know why but the box knot seems like it seems like it to me. It looks like a prison for the corpse. This one actually kind of looks like you know, like you seem a little more mobile. You've got arms, you've got legs to work, and it's like, you know, you almost look sort of humanoid-ish. You know, you. Whereas the box is just like so clunky and awkward, and yeah, the contemptor seems like a much better fate to end up. Yeah, in than a box I, I just. <laughs> If you're going to be in a in a uh, like heavily armored war machine for the rest of your not life, then <laughs> at least make it a cool, stylish one that's you know got a bit more armor and a bit a bit more powerful and looks yeah. more like you looked when you were alive mm-hmm. instead of a cardboard box with legs. <laughs> with <Yeah>. legs, yeah. <laughs> did they ever make like when they're making contemptors? Did they ever actually like craft them to look like? the space marine that's inside of it like make it look like his armor and how he like wore his shit no but that's only because this the uh they can like the the different dreadnoughts are all of them are like reusable so you have oh, a guy put okay. in the sarcophagus and then the sarcophagus goes on the dreadnought and then right. if something happens to the uh, the occupant then they just take the sarcophagus out and then stick another marine in it so right. they're, like, they're, they're they not making take... a they're not making a new contemptor for every dead space marine. It's like the no. the guy inside dies and then whoop take him out put a new battery in and okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's they're all like dreadnoughts as a whole are like prized possessions and especially the rarer ones like the contemptors all of Athens in 40k. Um, mm-hmm. they, they're like super, super valuable. You don't even deploy leviathans unless things are looking really bad because you don't want to lose it. Because once oh, it's fair. gone, it's gone. You can't yeah. make any more. They're oh, one of the ones true. where you just can't produce anything like them now. Yeah, because so, you, you said they had a Dark Age of Technology stuff on them, so yeah, you literally yeah. can't rebuild that. Once that's gone, it is. Good yep. luck. <laughs> good once luck. it's gone, it's gone. I think gone it might. Good, yeah. I think it might be the same for the Custodes ones as well. So the Custodes have got two of their own versions of uh, of Dreadnoughts. There's the Galatius, I think it's called. Um, I always forget how to pronounce it because oh, it's forty k and all the names of all the names are impossible. And then you got the Telamon. Custodies have dreadnoughts. Yeah, they do. I yep. didn't know that. That's fucking dope. They can go in normal contemptors, but they do have their own their own specialized dreadnoughts. Um, so there's the the one that's the one is basically a glorified contemptor. 
but it's got mm. a sword with a built-in heavy flamer and a storm shield. Oh. Because why not? Or it can take yeah, a not? massive guardian spear. So you can have like the same guardian spear that the custodians have, but dreadnought oh, yeah, yeah. sized, which oh. is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> As if their spears weren't good enough. Just mega size it and put it on a dreadnought. Sure. Just just, up, just upscale it. It looks solid. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> I think oh. it also has a las cannon instead of being a uh, instead of being a, a heavy bolter as well. So it's like mm. it's 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 properly strong. And the other is the Telamon Dreadnought, which is not really I don't believe it's based on anything specifically. I think it's just its own unique its own unique thing, which mm-hmm. has been designed to look like some of the Terminator armor that the custodies have. And oh. the the Telamon is like it's it's bigger than a Contemptor by quite a bit. I think it's in fact I'm just looking it's, around. It's taller than Leviathan as well. Oh, I think Shy just posted a couple pictures of it, and oh my fucking god! So yeah, those That's are the uh, sick. Where the ha- those are amazing pictures. So those yeah. are the the Galatius Galatus Dreadnought, which I uh, it's it's so cool. It's so good. Wow. Actually, having a held close combat weapon. That's something that I really I, I love converting stuff to do that. Because the Dreadnoughts, mm. they all have like close... Well, I say they all. They Most of them have the option to take close combat weapons, but it's fists or claws, and that's it. You know, yeah. you, you rarely get something that's actually holding a weapon. The Space Wolves have got, uh, have got a big axe and a shield on one of their venerable Dreadnoughts, which is awesome. But, like, for the most part, you're looking at a fist or a fist with a chainsaw on it or a fist with claws on it, and that's it. Yeah. The, the Custodies have got two of the best kind of variants of Dreadnought purely because they have a Guardian Spear and a sword and a shield. And they have the ridiculous Telamon Dreadnought <laughs> as well, which is just a massive, like, a massive fire platform. <laughs> Gigantic <laughs> shoulders, big missile launcher on top. It's so good. God damn. I, 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 oh boy, Contemptor Dreadnoughts are so sick. They're, I guess Dreadnoughts I in they, general are very sick, but God. The Contempt is like, whilst Leviathan is my favourite, Contempt is a definitely second favourite because they've mm-hmm. got the most variety. They've got a bunch of different weapon loadouts as well. And with the fact that like the the tabletop side of things, they've just been expanded on so much. So you've got all the different... like Each Legion has got a Contemptor. So you can either have a generic Contemptor or you could have one that's a Relic Contemptor or you can have one that looks like it belongs to the Raven Guards or the Iron Hands or Raven Guards, Raven Guard, Iron Hands, any of them, whatever you mm-hmm. fancy... There's something that's personalized for it, and it, yeah, they've just got they've got the best variety by far as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shy wants to know what you think about the new boy Redemptor. Well, I do. I also I have to say, Redemptor is Redemptor's up there, kind of about with the Contemptor. Probably like the Contemptor's just slightly ahead. I do love the Redemptor, but then I would say that because I do have ten of them. So, whoa! Um, but that's <laughs> that's mostly because I did a lot of altering and like gave them weird weapons. Or I mean, I gave one of them an Imperial Knight chainsword for an arm. So oh. I like stuff like that to make them a bit more ju- just a bit ridiculous. Um, the Redemptor, <laughs> the Redemptor is a bit. It's a bit Marmite for some because it's because it's yeah, it is. It's Box Two Point It's like a bit yeah. more articulated and it's a bit more developed than the Box Nought, but it does have a gut. So it's got like, it, <laughs> it like, it's got a full on gut, which it is a beer belly. <laughs> it takes some getting used to, and it's like, it, some people like it, some people aren't too sure. I I wasn't too sure to start with, but then I found a way to make it look more heavily armored, which mm-hmm. meant that the gut wasn't quite as bad. So that kind of that kind of heavily armored section you see with the uh, with the Aquila on the front of it, um, yeah. you can you can actually fit that higher up so that it's just like it's hard to tell on the on the picture because of the angle the photo has been taken at mm-hmm. but you can raise it up and you get two versions of it so you can take the decoration off the other version and trim it down so it's half the size and actually make oh. the front of it like super heavy armored with just right. like the slit of the sarcophagus showing at the very top and yeah. once i did that i was like that kind of that kind of makes it look less like a beer gut it makes it look more <laughs> like in proportion with itself. The Redemptor is great because it's it doesn't have anywhere near the options as the other Dreadnoughts. So like with the with the box Nauts, you've got multiple weapons options for each side. Um, you can also fit them out to be Mortis Dreadnoughts. So they've got like 
two of the same weapon on both arms. The Redemptor doesn't have that option, whereas like the Leviathan, the Contemptor, the, the Derrida, they all do. The Redemptor has an Onslaught Gatling Cannon, which is just a massive Gatling Cannon that can rip through infantry, or yeah. it has a Plasma Incinerator, which is good for anti-armor, and it's got a, a close combat fist. It does have Storm Bolters if you want them, or you can fit missile launches to it as well, and it's got a miniature Gatling Cannon, um, on under the fist or a flame under the fist. It's nowhere near as customizable, but it is strong and the weapons are powerful. And it also has the added <laughs> the added bonus of it can only be piloted by Primaris. So oh. Call built it specifically as a as a like dreadnought for um, Primaris Marines who are you know brought to the edge of death in battle. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it has a slight downside though because the Redemptor is. It's absolutely hardcore. It just burns out its pilots. Oh, so it's another one of those, huh? Like kind of yeah. like the Leviathan. Yep. Except the Leviathan can go quite a while before it burns them out. The Redemptor has only been around for as long as Primaris Marines have been around, and and a, a good number of Redemptors oh. that have fought for a sustained period. Um, as I as I I've, I've I've written this down because I love the wording of it. Um, Redemptors that have fought for a sustained period will have already had their sarcophagi replaced because the original pilots have been burnt out by the machine's destructive prowess. <laughs> oh, wow. Jeez. So, so it's if, like, you it's wanna, like, if you want to burn through a nearly dead spa- or Primaris, <laughs> you put them in a Redemptor. Yeah, uh, I'm, yep. I'm assuming the Redemptors are also just ungodly strong and that like the burnout of a former Primaris is more than worth uh, the price of admission. Ah, oh, definitely, yeah. It, it's okay. totally worth it. You you get to you get your kind of uh, super super soldier for a little bit longer, but the downside yeah. is that it it does it invariably just kills them. <laughs> it well, it just, good. just absolutely burns them out because it's just it's. I think it's something to do with the uh, like the advanced systems of it and the mm. like the power of the weaponry and the kind of mental power required to uh, to pilot it. And the way it like links into the uh, in I was gonna say inhabitants into the guys <laughs> into like the guy's brain, it means you can it means it's like more dexterous than you would think, and it's faster than you would think. But yeah. it all comes at a horrible price, <laughs> which is just again it's it's like it's just like a miniaturized version of forty k because you got you got the fact that a space marine can get nearly killed, put in a in a walking box and made to fight for even longer. But then you step it up a notch by going. Oh, and now the now the slightly better space marines can do the same thing, but it will kill them anyway because it's just <laughs> that strong. <laughs> it's yep. just so harsh. But on the plus side, in 40k there are a surplus of dead or nearly dead people to probably power this thing, right? Even if you're a Primaris, like people are dying so often in 40k, you you know, it's it's like going down to the dollar store and picking up batteries. Right. Oh yeah, you're not you're not wanting for nearly dead <laughs> yeah. dead space marines. Really, there's plenty in the 40k universe, man. You could you could uh, you could door dash some of those to your door. You know? like, oh man, I don't have any batteries. Oh, I'll just door dash a nearly dead space marine. They'll bring it over. It's fine. We'll be ready for I the lo- battle. Yeah. I love the idea of a, like a chapter master sitting there and it's like we've got three empty redemptors. Okay, let me just let me just let me just call the lads. They're, 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 they're planet side right now. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to fill that <laughs> fill yeah, that before we, the hour's over. It. You know. Yeah, we got this. Don't worry. <laughs> that's like that's like that's like currency you could find in a 40k couch, right? Like, oh man, there's three dead. Re- there's three empty redemptors. Check under the couch. I'm pretty sure we've got three. Bodies <laughs> yeah, in there's there. gonna be something lying <laughs> around. <laughs> Check under the cushion. <laughs> Oh Oof. god, it's so harsh. It's so harsh. It's so grim dark. That's well, that's what makes 40k so great though, is you know it's grim dark. It's, it's crazy. Just everything gets progressively worse. It's like even as the technology somehow miraculously got a bit better, the price is oh yeah, these dreadnoughts just burn out the pilots real yep. quick. It's yep. like, oh okay. For a minute they there were, I thought we we're onto a winner, yeah. but apparently not. <laughs> they were mostly dead, now they're for sure dead dead, so but hey, they went out in a blaze of glory. And now you get a really cool. <laughs> That's mini the important fight. bit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there is also there is also a night lord a night lord uh, box nought there as well. 
which is Ooh. a great older model. That's an old Forge World model. They don't make those anymore. They used to make a uh, a different dreadnought for each of the for each of the Chaos Chaos Legions, mm-hmm. Chaos Warbands. Um, but those uh, those haven't been sold for ages. But with them, there is a a really cool variant of the box Boxnaut, which is a Sonic dreadnought for the Emperor's Children, which Ooh. is. Kind of, I mean, it's pretty much the same as your as your normal as your normal dreadnought. It looks a little bit leaner, a bit meaner. Like the uh, the waist is a bit, it's a bit higher up, um, mm-hmm. but it's covered in sonic weaponry. So it's got a massive oh. sonic blaster <laughs> on one arm and uh, and speaker grills coming out of the top of it. They're in the shape of like kind of screaming mouths. It's it's oh, hardcore. Sick. It's great. I I would love to see the Night Lords one because uh, I mentioned we were. Uh reading the night lord trilogy and they literally have like a dreadnought fight like there's a i think it's a blood angel dreadnought fights the the night lord dreadnought and it's it's wild and they both well <laughs> they both kill each <laughs> other both... <laughs> i don't know no spoilers for the other books but they both kill each other and uh it's it's whew, i'm i'm not exactly sure how those two dreadnought fit in the corridors of that ship though i'm really not because <laughs> they're such beefy <laughs> boys it's just like jesus christ you wrecked the whole fucking ship i yeah, do like that like the, i think there's i'm trying to remember there's a i think there's a horse heresy a horse heresy book where or is it a word bearers book there's one book that has got like a dreadnought fight, and I'm pretty sure there's collateral damage, like where where okay. like space marines fighting around them and they just crush a guy, just because they're oh. fighting and they just <laughs> and like so move large. to the side and yeah <laughs> they, they just <laughs> they just crush him against something yep. and then just move on and they don't even notice it's like he's in yep. the middle of firing his bolter and that's it someone stepped on him and then left it's just yep. and it's funny because in the in the book the um whatever his name is, Malkarian or Malkador, or whatever the fucking uh, Dreadnought's name is, uh, he refuses to be woken up. Like, they tried to put him in a Dreadnought, and he's like, no, I don't want to go in. I might just be uh, a nearly dead, but no, I'm not waking up. Fuck you. Um... And I was I didn't I didn't realize that the pilot had a choice. <laughs> I didn't realize that they were able to just be like, no, I won't go in that. You can't make me. Mm. And then just go back to sleep. Especially if it's like if it's like a, a chaos marine, it's just we just don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> we just don't want to do it. I don't want anything to do with this. Leave me alone. I don't, don't want to be a hell brute. Thing. I, that's the, something else with the hell brute that I'd uh, that I <laughs> that I had noted down, but I got excited and missed. Um, they they don't just take the sarcophagus out of the hell brute in between fights because the guy inside is insane and will just try and kill everything. They oh, also yeah. chain the empty hell brute up. In case part of the uh, part of the pilot's um, like spirit is still in it, oh. just in case, because it could be they take the sarcophagus uh, the sarcophagus out and they take out the guys piloting it, but the hell brute still attacks something because enough of its enough of the pilot's psyche is left in it that it's still oh. angry, which is hardcore. <laughs> that is some serious chaos shit. That is. It's so good. <laughs> that is. That is. Uh, yeah. That's hardcore chaos. So they they are literally chaining up an empty hell brute. Yes. Before they yeah. take out. Wow. That's. <laughs> They'll chain it up just on the off chance. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm assuming that's happened before, and that's why they do it, right? Like it's it's a thing that could actually. They're not just being too cautious. I'm assuming this has happened, and the hell brute has just been like, "Oh my god, we took the sarcophagus out. Why is it still going?" I think I think there's mention of it in one of the. It's either one of the codexes or like a white dwarf article or something. I forget which one, but but yeah, it's 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 a risk. It's like an actual risk. Yes. Yeah. So you've got to be you've got to be super careful with your hell brute to empty it out. <laughs> Just take the guy out. Really and hollow that chain thing it out. Up. Yeah. Oh that oh god that that uh, Nurgle dreadnought that Death Guard dreadnought is gross. That thing is That's... disgusting. That's awful. That... I Ugh, that. That's I great know. artwork, but the f- yeah. oh the flesh, the flesh on the one the, side is just yep. ugh. Ugh, it's really really gross. Um, you know I... what? There is actually <laughs> sorry, go on. Oh, I, I was gonna say I uh, on my feed there was a guy that took um, I forget what the minis are called, but they were the there were these uh, death guards, and he was like, yeah, what would happen if a death guard took a bath and washed off all the all the 
disgusting boils and he literally like shaved off all the boils oh, and like gave God, it regular I... flesh and it was the most <laughs> cursed fucking thing ever he 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 made like green stuff hair and it, he gave them like normal skin and they were like all clean and it was like oh my god this is so oh it's, it's cursed i don't uh, i didn't need to see washed nurgle boys Ugh. you know what i am Ugh. i'm i'm searching for a picture for you for the like the worst miniature <laughs> I've ever seen. It it is when I say the worst miniature, it's one of the best done things. Yeah. Like the, it's the not, cursed it's not... Nurgle clean ones were very well done, but it's okay. oh, <laughs> an image I didn't someone, know I didn't someone need did to this see. Someone did it to a to uh, oh, no. a great demon. The, oh, no. Yeah, there we go. The great clean one. Oh no! It's awful. I hate it. Oh god! It's terrible. It's so smooth. It's so Warhammer smooth. creators, stop making clean Nurgle models. They're so cursed. Oh, Looks like no. just a fat evil baby. It's terrible. <laughs> it is just a fat evil baby. <laughs> oh, what they did it? a different. Oh, what? Oh no! No, oh, that's even worse so than the baby bad. one. <laughs> oh, it's way worse than the baby one. Oh god! Oh, it's all. Oh no! Oh, the sag is just. It's just <laughs> not great. <laughs> oh no! I don't god. understand how it's. It's so much grosser than the actual great unclean one. Is what gets me. Like it's just. Yeah. It's objectively more disgusting, and it yeah, shouldn't I, be. <laughs> I think I'd be more comfortable seeing the actual great unclean one with like the mouth and the stomach and the green skin and the boils and. Ah, oh, it's. Uh, what the, ah, from the, the s- back. Ah, oh, the smooth back is just the <laughs> worst. <laughs> it's awful. The folds. The ah. Oh, oh god. Uh, it's, it's like somehow he's like a skin coat. It's awful. Uh, it's like the. It's almost like the the less like the smoother it gets, the more like explicit it is. And I don't yeah. understand how. I just don't like it. Oh, it's really bad. That's not. That's oh. oh. Also, there's there's been a considerable amount of effort has gone into smoothing out that arse as well. Oh, that oh is... no! Did we have to point it out though? <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> that was an image I did not need this morning. <laughs> someone's someone's like someone spent like a lavish amount of time and attention <laughs> just on that area. And uh, it... yeah, can you imagine? It was like, oh, you know, the ass isn't quite well defined. Let me get some like putty and really shape and sculpt it. Like, oh, <laughs> four hours just sculpting the great unclean one's ass. Like, I love the. Imagine... <laughs> What did I you do that. today? It's like, oh yeah, I just I went to the store, picked up some things. Oh yeah, I sculpted a fat Nurgle ass <laughs> <laughs> all day. I, it took me six hours, but God, look at that ass! Oh, oh d- d- the, the alternative being the their other half sticks their head around the door and they're like, "Are we still are we still going out for dinner with uh, <laughs> t- out to dinner with my parents? I mean, you can go, but clearly I've got something to do here." <laughs> I'm doing right. God's work here. <laughs> you, you go. This desperately needs my attention. <laughs> Come back in five hours and we'll talk. Oh man, uh, great, great work though. But oh, it's so well done. Is the thing it's I reckon too it wouldn't well be well done. Yeah, it, it would be. It would be easier to deal with if it was badly done. You know, this is this is a prime <laughs> example of an abuse of power and talent. Like this is the epitome <laughs> yeah. of chaos. Right. What is this it? Is, Awful taste, but great execution. Yeah, That's it. This That's is <laughs> this is Horus level heresy right here. Right. Horus was the best. He was the most talented. But why did you have to do what you did? <laughs> <laughs> this is Horus shit. <laughs> I love the idea of just someone going like me. They like, show it like on a tabletop for the first time, and someone just oh. goes, "I, I am filled with respect for the workmanship, but please leave." Yeah, get just, out. Just, just get out. You put, well, that's probably the strategy. You put it on the table, and the other guy's like, I forfeit. This is ridiculous. Yeah. I'm out. I'm just going to leave. I can't look at that anymore. I'm out. You win. Fine. Whatever. <laughs> I'm not even going to pack up my army. You keep it. I just don't want to <laughs> yeah. be here anymore. Yeah, you take all of it. This is 2,000 points of really well done Tau, but I'm out. You take what you want. <laughs> never, never show your face here again. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we've we've gotten just a smidge off topic. Just a, only a little bit. Yeah. The thing is, but I, the our thing listeners is, should be used to that by now. If if anyone's like, how did this turn into a Death Guard episode? Shut up, comments. This happens every episode. <laughs> See, I was I was gonna go from the Nurgle Dreadnought and go that that is like the Nurgle Hellbrew, and it is gross. There is there is another surprising source of grossness for Dreadnoughts though, because um, there is a word bearer's contemptor, oh, which is no, <laughs> which is real, like it is real warp based. Just nonsense going on. Oh so, no, <laughs> That's... they have got. It's it's bad, isn't it? The teeth in the chest. <laughs> yeah, is... the horn coming out of his fore, like literally protruding through his skull. Oh. Yeah, <sighs> it's really cool, but it is. I mean, it's word bearers, so it's it's like it's it's super grim. So yeah. it's uh like the the word bearers that um ended up being possessed and and kind of became hybrids with with demonic entities during the Horus Heresy. Uh, the Galvorback, they they could transform and like in battle, and they were faster and stronger, and uh, and one of them, one of them got absolutely annihilated. So like they were barely barely alive, and there was also a completely wrecked Contemptor Dreadnought nearby. So they were oh. put together, and then there was a bit of there was a bit of a uh, bit of chanting. Bit of uh, yeah. bit, bit of blood magic, bit of you know warp <laughs> warp trickery, uh-huh. and uh, and they they created that which is the Maragal tainted dreadnought. Oh my god! Oh god! The, the, oh, I just noticed the teeth on the side of the thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's so oh. it's grim. Oh, it's boy. a really cool model, but it's it's pretty awful. That um, is definitely a forty k miniature for sure. <laughs> it's it's rough. It's it's something yeah. that only uh, only word bearers can take in Horus Heresy. So it's like it's super <laughs> super specific. And um, if I remember correctly, I don't know whether they've changed the rules for it, but it's it's cool. But it does have a slight downside in that it hurts like everything around it. If I remember oh, right, okay. um, because it's it's got like a contemptor's reactor, but it's all like warp twisted. So there's this horrendous aura that just spills out from it and, and causes warp based mayhem all around it all the time oh. um <laughs> wow, it's <that's> also awful. <laughs> it does have a plasma uh, plasma cannon as well in there which you can't really see because a big fist is grown around it oh yeah um, oh is that an actual finger that's oh God. yeah it's got three fingers on one on one side um, oh, or at least God. it can take can take a plasma cannon that's a warp fire plasma cannon so it's it's still everything about it is just is just yeah. awful and warp based. It's I just, just thought those were like bone claws, but then I looked again at like the full size and I was like, oh god, those are fingers. Oh no. Yeah, they got fingernails. Oh. There's just oh, no god. need. Yeah, that's There's... just oh boy. Uh, hey, plenty of things to clean his fingernails out with though, should they ever get, you know. Oh. <laughs> plenty of <laughs> plenty of sharp edges to really clean the the blood out of your nails with that one. Oh god, I it's hate so it. bad. It's a yeah. it's a great model. It's a really cool oh, idea, yeah. but it's it's word bearers. So it's that all is... it's all full of suffering and hatred. <laughs> that is that is the definition of cursed. Like oh boy, it, yeah, it literal, really is. figurative. It's... It is cursed in every sense of the word. <laughs> it's. It's awesome. I love it. <laughs> it is. It's, it is. Oh, it's great for 40k. That is, that is exactly what you want to see from a chaos faction. I did also the carvings. They, it's like it's a small thing compared to the teeth coming out of the chest and the horn out of the head and the the actual fingers. But there's like little little carvings of uh, of of Colchisian runes on the armor, which oh, is oh yeah 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 really cool. Looks like it's just barely being held together by those incantation like uh, scripts, uh, little little pieces of paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. Slap I haven't got those one on. yet. This will keep it together. I hope. Yet one day I'm gonna yeah. grab one of them because I I need it. I just I need it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Looks like 40k duct tape is the little scroll. <laughs> Slap another Get scroll together. on there, it'll be fine. <laughs> he won't. He's only kind of insane. Slap another scroll on there, it'll hold it together. I swear. The, the, the flex tape of word bearer technology. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> 
Lorgar doing a commercial. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> Poof. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so dreadnoughts, huh? Fucking I think cool. We've, we've pretty much we've pretty much covered all of them. There is there is one. Well, there's two. There's two named dreadnoughts that that we haven't mentioned. That like they get they have to be mentioned because they're okay. They're important. We've mentioned Bjorn the Fell Handed, who is like like an absolute legend dreadnought who's been around for since literally since Centuries. before the Horus Heresy. So Ooh, you know man. he's he's clearly he's clearly the best. But there yeah. are. There is an honourable mention for just being an absolutely absurdly hard dreadnought, um, which is technically, technically this is a sh- like a dreadnought chassis, not the actual person inside. So Bjorn the Fellhanded is like he, he's the occupant of the uh, of the chassis that he's in, which is just a venerable dreadnought with a, a cool claw that's mm-hmm. a little bit different. Um, but there is an actual. An actual chassis for a dreadnought, which is just a box nought. It's a castra castraferum one, um, like like all the others. But it was made by the Primarch Vulcan, and Ooh. the the actual chassis itself is called the Iron Dragon, and it's the first ever ironclad dreadnought, which is like a box nought but like more heavily armored and with mm-hmm. siege weaponry. So stuff for close quarters combat, like flamers. It's got yeah. siege drills and and hammers and stuff. Um, but he built the uh, the Iron Dragon ironclad dreadnought chassis, which is believed by the Salamans at least to be the the first ironclad ever made. And the current occupant oh. is a guy called Brayarth Ashmantle, and that is a, is a solid solid dreadnought. I don't know whether it still <laughs> holds up on the tabletop, but the last time I saw someone play um, Brayarth Ashmantle in their Salamanders army. Um, he killed three Chaos Knights. Whoa! Um, he, d- <laughs> okay. he died. Him- it took him dying to kill the third one, but he took two on in close combat and killed both of them. Now, obviously, there's some there's some good roles going on there for Brayar. Sure, it's not like that's sure. something could be pulled off every time. Mm-hmm. But he has the potential uh, to do it, though. Like he has you, the potential you to do it. Do it. He's a it's a really cool, really really cool dreadnought, like special character for the Salamanders that you can use um, as an HQ choice as well, if I remember right. So you can uh, you can you can have him leading your army because it's just that much of a legend. Damn, that's a that's a hell of a dreadnought. Uh, the one picture Shy posted of it, it doesn't look that great, but then again, the lighting is pretty terrible. In that it's picture, also an so. older sculpt, like it's it's an old oh. model at this point. Okay. It's been around for quite a while. Um, it's it's kind of one of those. It's one of those ones where it has it has a lot of charm to it because it's it's a bit on the older side, but like the story mm. behind it is really cool. So it's a case of kind of like uh, okay. model could be a little bit better, but on the other hand, it's it's like the first ever ironclad dreadnought. Right. So surely that's surely that's worth something, right? That's that's. Yeah. Just the fact that the Salamanders have the first one and Vulcan built it. And it has a stat line that's different to other Ironclads because Vulcan made it himself. So it's like, it's it's just a little bit special. So Eldar then, players would be able to relate to an old model that looks terrible and it's like, uh, but hey, it's, uh, you know, it's a it's a thing. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wraith Lords as well. I totally forgot about Wraith Lords. That's, that's not fair because Eldar do have Dreadnoughts too. They that's, that's they're kind of cool. yeah well, they the they get they get some right. cool they get some cool uh, like powered by the dead models the Eldar do so it's not quite the same with the Space Marines you've got like your half dead lad in there with the orcs you just drop a guy in and he yeah. <laughs> pushes all the buttons the Eldar as as is typical for them their their soul powers it and controls it so there's no right. body instead they've got their their like their soul stones. Oh, so is it the soul stone that's literally powering it? I think it's the soul stone combined with it's the infinity circuit, if I remember the name of it properly. Um oh, so okay. it's it's like they they power it not not physically, um, but but like their spirit controls it, which is which is pretty solid. They don't even that need the body cool. in there. Oh that is I think this is So is it more the- like 
So is it? It's not necessarily like is it one Eldar control, like one dead Eldar control, or is it more like because um, the Infinity Circuit is a lot of dead Eldar, right? Yes, yeah. I think Infinite the Infinity Circuit is essentially all all dead Eldar from one particular craft world, at least. I think the Infinity yeah. Circuits are like craft world specific, um, and they're just all of the Eldar souls are in there. And right. uh, and one is drawn out of the Infinity Circuit, and okay. it goes into the Wraithbone construct that is the uh, the Wraith Lord and controls it. I, t- I t- I've just thought, uh, what do you reckon, Shy? Would a Wraith Knight be classed as a Dreadnought as well? Because a Wraith Knight's a Wraith Knight's a weird one. Wraith Knight is peak Eldar, because a Wraith Knight has got a living pilot and a dead pilot. Oh. It's 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 super specific, right? So a wraith knight is a really big kind of wraith lord esque thing. It's it's a it's another like walker, very similar style, mm-hmm. uh, close combat weapon and, and a gun or two. Um, but it's it's way way bigger. But it has it has a living pilot, and it has a dead pilot, and the dead pilot is the <laughs> it's the living pilot's dead twin. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! It's so it's, dark. It's it's so dark. It's it's Holy really shit. harsh. <laughs> oh no! Oh god! <laughs> it's, it's 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 really mean. It's really mean. That is it's horrible, like... man. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! I guess if we have a dead pilot involved, it can count as a dreadnought. I guess it's a dreadnought then. I guess it's a an offshoot of a dreadnought because there is a fuck. Your dead twin. Oh my god. <laughs> That's why I said it was peak Eldar. It's yeah. like peak yep. suffering. You know. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I guess that's one way to honor your dead twin is to still fight with it and kill people with it. Sure. <laughs> it's so dark. Oh my god. I mean, it's like it is. It is quite a bit bigger. You know, it's it's a, it's a sizable it's a sizable vehicle. But it's just the fact that it's not just it's not just one pilot alive, one pilot dead. It's the fact they had to be twins. Twins. Like it's oh. twins every time. Every time you see a wraith knight, it's like, oh dear. Oh, I know yeah. what happened they, there. That's, you've suffered that's greatly. Not, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You've, neither of you are having a great time with this, mm-hmm. are you? It's not. <laughs> At least the orcs get to have fun in that it's just one orc. Yeah, it it seems like if you want to be in a dreadnought, the best one is to be an orc. Because uh, at least you're not dead, your twin brother's not dead, you're not getting fused <laughs> yeah. into the dreadnought and with chaos warp shit, you're just having a great time. As usual, it's the most fun to be an orc in 40 uh, Yeah, every time. <laughs> yep. There is, I reckon there's there's one more, there's one more Dreadnought, one more note. well actually there's loads of notable Dreadnoughts, so there's absolutely tons of them, <laughs> but when it when it comes to, I mean, if, if, you, if you're going to live up to, going to live up to the name of the podcast, then you can't <laughs> talk about Dreadnoughts without talking about Murder Fang the Curseborn, <laughs> which is a real name, <laughs> an actual real name, uh, <laughs> hang on, I'll get it. I'll get you the picture. <laughs> unless a shy beats me to it. Oh, that's fucking great. Murder Fang. <laughs> Murder Fang. That's the most He's got a bit of a goofy face. No, really. Murder He's got a goofy Whoa. face. <laughs> Funnily enough, you can you can you can see like you can easily tell that he's a space wolf dreadnought. <laughs> um, yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> with the ice talons. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um but they don't even know who he is, so they basically <laughs> found they just the space wolves just found a a dreadnought, or at least something that looks like a dreadnought, wandering around on some planet somewhere, and they were like, I don't know, I don't know who this is or what this is, don't know what the deal is. Let's take it home. It's called Murder <laughs> Fang now. <laughs> they they just found an abandoned dreadnought that was just rolling around. They were like, aw. That puppy's cute. Can we keep him? Lehman, can we keep him? Can we keep him? Oh, I guess. It's a lot of responsibility. You're going to have to feed it and clean up after it. But I, I guess I guess we can take it home. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. It's just they don't even like, they can't even put it to sleep. It just lives in a prison until they need it. And then they just throw it at someone. 
because it's got no <laughs> it's got no personality it's got no like no it's it doesn't talk or anything it just oh, wow. murders that's all it is it's just <laughs> murder fang the curse born and every now and again they're like oh okay things are looking bad let's throw murder fang at them <laughs> it's just uh, it's one of the weirdest like just one of the weirdest things that that space wolves have uh, space wolves have, have got cuz yeah, it's that's... just like <laughs> 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 they just they just found a stray dreadnought. I mean, that's a great stray thing to find. Like of all the things you could just be like, hey, we found we we found this thing that we finding a rogue dreadnought is pretty great. I mean, that's a pretty it's, it's good pretty thing cool. to just hey, a free dreadnought and it just wants to murder shit. Okay. Well, the thing is that the thing is that like it, it, they're pretty sure it's a dreadnought, but even that is it's like in the I think in the initial blurb when it's when it's like introduced. It's called a metal skinned creature, a metal skilled metal skinned monster of the curse born <laughs> prophecy. And it, oh. it says it resembles a Space Wolves dreadnought. I mean it clearly is a dreadnought, but it's like even that it makes it sound like they're not hundred percent sure. <laughs> they're like it, on some level it's like <laughs> pretty sure that's a dreadnought, right? Yeah, sure, let's take it home. It's like, <laughs> it might be a dreadnought. I well, yeah, sure. Um, oh, also, Shy said to the listeners, uh, people are probably going to uh, whine that we haven't talked about the Dreadnought who nuked Fulgrim, but he probably deserves his own episode. So just, we know, chat. We know. We know. Okay. We get it. It's cool. It'll get talked about later. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, I mean, that does, that probably just deserves its own episode. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Dreadnoughts are, Dreadnoughts are wild. Dreadnoughts Dead. are. They're the best. I hope you can. I hope you can now appreciate why I've got so fucking many of them. <laughs> Thirty-two, you said dreadnoughts. Yeah, it's it's, it's pretty. It's, the, it's pretty you know, pretty silly. The to be dreadnought honest. master. Who better to do this episode <laughs> than the person with a literal army of dreadnoughts surrounding him? I mean, they're just they're just cool. They're, they're yeah. just really cool. There's so many All- different versions and loadouts, and variants, and. You know, they're all horrific in their own special way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all, all the Dreadnoughts I've seen have been amazing. Do you, so do you just do, like, Dreadnoughts, or do you do Wraith Lords too, because they're kind of Dreadnoughty? Do you do the Orc ones, or is it just, like, Imperium Dreadnought? I, I, I kind of, I sort of branched out from Dreadnoughts into Tanks and Knights. So the mm. So there's a, there's an Imperial Guard Armored Company on the go at the moment, where I'm aiming to I reckon with what I've got, with what I've got planned, it should add up to, add up to about six thousand points in the end of Ooh. just tanks. Um, <laughs> that's a lot of cause, points. Cause, I mean, that's the that's just the number of tanks that it, like it just kind of coincided with the number and variety of tanks that I wanted, mm. and I was like, that's that's too many points. There's no point doing that. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, but then I'll have loads of tanks, so. I should, I should do it anyway. <laughs> there are too many points to doing that, eh? Because it's 6,000 of them. So <laughs> it's, it's, oh, it's no. Too many, too many points. Get it? Put the drum I, roll in, Shy. Put the fucking drum roll in. It's huh? been nice. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. I'll get... <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I guess that probably is a solid time to uh, take this thing home. Little, little, would, little, would, little longer than our be, average episode. Would that be but, the best way for a, for, for a guest to end an episode? Just yeah. walk out. Just like, I am so, so, I don't know how you deal with this fucking idiot, Bricky, because I'm out of here. You guys have taken up too much of my goddamn time. <laughs> oh, I, I feel uncomfortable even thinking about joking about that. Oh, don't like it. <laughs> it's I'm all. getting the great clean one shivers. <laughs> We've, uh, oh, definitely a solid time to wrap it up. Um, thank you for listening to the podcast. Uh, it has been fantastic. If you want to support the podcast, again, patreon.com slash adeptusridiculous. Uh, you can also get our merch at orchid8.com. Uh, Shy is at orchid8.com slash adeptusridiculous. Usually Bricky does the merch. I'm, it's got to be sla- orchid8 slash. Ad- whatever. It's in the links. You guys know what to do with it. Um, oh, it's orchid8.com slash collections slash adeptusridiculous. It's also Close enough. The- yeah, close enough. Uh, get that Metal Men t-shirt, that maroon one. It looks real slick. Um, <clears throat> I have no idea what the status on the dice are that were shown off in the last drinking episode, but uh, soon TM. 
Uh, I have been DK Diamantes. You can find me uh, everywhere, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, whatever, at DK Diamantes. Oh, they're there! Oh, fuck! You can, <laughs> you can get the Adeptus Ridiculous dice pack right now! Those are some good-looking dice. You should definitely yeah. do that. The the six is our uh, is our skull logo. Um, yeah, d d get it. Uh, uh, black dice, gold pips, white skull. Oh, sick! It's sick. Oh, it looks great. Uh, for a... and you've done the important thing. You've put the you've put the logo on the six, not the one. Exactly. Which exactly. It, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be a thing. But for some reason, some some places do it, including Games Workshop. We yep. put logos on the one. Don't ever do that. Do it the right. Do it this way. It's, yeah, because you the should be way. happy to see your logo. Yeah. Um, also, it looks like you can buy them in amounts of 10, 25, and 50 dice. So there you go. 10 dice is 20 bucks. 25 dice is 35. 50 is 50 bucks. So, yeah. That's, that's wow. That's cool. God, I wish I had known at the beginning of the episode. Oh, well, whatever. We'll talk about it in the next one. Um, and our amazing fill-in guest host for today was Kiriath, who I think did a fantastic job uh, filling in for Bricky. Uh, did us a real big solid. Thank you so much. Where where can we all find you if we want more Kiriath goodness? Kiriath pretty much everywhere. I think Kiriath or Kiriath TV works for YouTube um, and just Kiriath everywhere else pretty much. Consistent brand. Uh, and you can find Shy at uh, Quite Shallow pretty much everywhere. On Twitch, it's actually THE Quite Shallow. Uh, I had a bit of a panic attack when she first changed it, because I was like, oh my god, the Quiet Shy doesn't... It, it, it's redirecting me to nowhere. What happened? So it's, it's, quite, it's quite Shallow pretty much everywhere. So uh, that's, that's it. Dreadnoughts are cool. Uh, stop cleaning your Nurgle models. Leave them dirty. Don't touch them. If you if you learned nothing else from this episode, <laughs> stop cleaning your Nurgle models.